Welcome to the Luke Messiah Show. God bless Tucker Carlson. Today, we're actually going to talk about why we're blessed to have conservative voices speak into Texas and force Republicans to actually protect our rights, rights that we know we have, but will only preserve if Republicans actually fight for us. And speaking of Republicans fighting for us, we're going to talk about property tax relief. Where is it? What are they doing with all the extra money we gave them? Who's actually willing to say we should have it back? Let's get to the show. On April 7th, Tucker Carlson took to the airwaves, the largest cable news show in America, to address something happening in Texas and specifically call out Governor Abbott regarding Sergeant Daniel Perry. Let's get to this clip. So during the last outbreak of armed extremism, which of course was the BLM riots of 2020, a former army sergeant called Daniel, P- Daniel Perry was driving for Uber in Austin, Texas. He was an Uber driver. He's in his car and a mob of rioters surround him in the middle of the street and begin hitting his car. One member of the mob was a man called Garrett Foster. Foster is a militant with a history of waving his rifle at people. He approached Perry's driver's side window with an AK-47. Then he raised the rifle. And when he did that, Perry shot and killed him in self-defense. The lead detective in the case and the Austin police concluded it was a justified shooting. If that's not a justified shooting, there's no such thing. But because Austin, Texas, the justice system is overseen by a Soros-funded DA, Perry was charged with murder for defending himself. And tonight, we are sad to tell you, This man, a military veteran driving an Uber car, was convicted of murder. And what does that mean? It means that in the state of Texas, if you have the wrong politics, you're not allowed to defend yourself. So this is a legal atrocity. It's so obviously unjust that tonight we extended an invitation to the sitting governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, to come on this show on Monday. And we wanted to ask if he was considering a pardon for Daniel Perry. But for some reason, Governor Greg Abbott's office told us he just can't make it and that we should talk to the Attorney General of Texas, Ken Paxton, instead. So that is Greg Abbott's position. There is no right of self-defense in Texas. We're going to keep trying to reach the governor of Texas, get his views on that, and the Attorney General for that matter. Let me explain to you one thing that sets Tucker Carlson apart from almost everybody else in national journalism. And his rule is similar to the same rules that we have here at Texas Scorecard and here on the Luke Messiah Show. The difference is that on the Luke Messiah Show, we're speaking to thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of people across Texas on any given topic in any given week. And Tucker Carlson is speaking to millions of Americans But the rule is that he wants to give Republicans an opportunity to do the right thing, to take the right stands, to take actions in the public policy arena that are consistent with the things that they say they believe. And when they don't, he will still talk about it. And that's what's not normal. You see, In any other outlet on probably Fox News, if they reached out to Governor Abbott and said, we'd like a statement from you on this deal, and he just responded with, oh, I'm not available for an interview, but you may talk to Attorney General Ken Paxton, they'd say, let's talk to Attorney General Ken Paxton. Let's reach out to Ken Paxton and ask him what he has to say about it. But Tucker Carlson understands that that's not what this is about. What this is about is the fact that you don't know what you're going to do yet. You don't know what your position is going to be. And you know that I'm going to ask you if people in Texas can know that they have the right to self-defense. That's what he's going to ask. And Greg Abbott is smart enough to know that if I don't know how I'm going to answer that question yet, I don't want to go on your show. This segment from Tucker Carlson got millions of views when it was said, because millions of Americans are watching him. The clip on Twitter alone got a million views, millions of impressions. And so the next day, Governor Abbott came out and made this statement. Let's take a, let's, let's read it real quick. Texas has one of the strongest stand your ground laws of self-defense that cannot be nullified by a jury or a progressive district attorney. Unlike the president, 
or some other states, the governors in some other states, the Texas Constitution limits the governor's pardon authority to only act on a recommendation by the Board of Pardons and Paroles. Texas law does, does allow the governor to request the Board of Pardons and Paroles to determine if a person should be granted a pardon. I have made that request and instructed the board to expedite its review. I look forward to approving the board's pardon recommendation as soon as it hits my desk. Additionally, I have already prioritized reining in road district attorneys and the Texas legislature is working on laws to achieve that goal. Now, Governor Abbott could have gone on Tucker Carlson's show the night before and said that word for word, and it would have been awesome. But the reality is, at the time, clearly they hadn't decided what they were going to do. Now, once millions of Americans have been told what's happening in Texas and how the right to self-defense is actually truly at jeopardy, Governor Abbott quickly comes out with this statement. Now, we're very grateful for Governor Abbott's position on Sergeant Daniel Perry, but we're also grateful for Tucker Carlson being willing to take the stand, being willing to be the tip of the spear. Uh, Chairman Matt Rinaldi came out literally within, I don't know, minutes of this statement saying a pardon is in order. And you quickly saw Republican after Republican after Republican come out. A pardon is in order. A pardon is in order. A pardon is in order. It was clear that this action had to get taken. It's unfortunate that Governor Abbott decided to play Tucker Carlson the way he did, but ultimately we could care less as long as Sergeant Daniel Perry receives justice. And as long as we send a message to these liberal cities that you're not allowed to take away someone's Second Amendment right to self-defense, regardless of what your judges and juries decide. So now let's talk about property taxes. I want to start by establishing what the current situation is and what I think the ultimate outcome is likely to be. So the Texas legislature knows that many Texans are being taxed out of their homes. And many of them campaigned and told people at the door, I believe you're being taxed out of your homes. I believe we need to give you massive property tax relief. Many even said, I believe we need to eliminate the M&O property tax system. I believe we actually need to eliminate your entire M&O property taxes. Some told them, I think we should eliminate all property taxes. And in order to do that, you have to take the revenue that the state of Texas gets from other taxes and you have to spend it to buy down property taxes. We've talked about this on the show on a regular basis. The interesting thing is the Texas legislature this year has a record revenue surplus. And what that means is that they have tens of billions of dollars, over $30 billion that they took from us that they didn't need to take. Okay. So when you file your income taxes, if you've overpaid, the federal government says, oh, you didn't owe us as much money as you paid us. We're returning X amount of dollars back to you. Okay. And then some people are like, oh, I got this money. And the truth is you didn't really get the money. It's your money. They just had to return it to you because they overtaxed you. And there was similar language used by Representative Carrie Isaac when she rolled out the Texas Freedom Caucus's legislative priority. And we'll talk about that in a second, but first, let's just watch this short clip. Let's just listen to or watch, depending on the platform you're on, this short clip of Representative Carrie Isaac. Uh, so let's go to this clip. I've talked to too many property owners in Texas who are suffering and being taxed out of their home, and it is unacceptable. The state of Texas has over $30 billion of excess revenue. We have been overtaxed. We must return the money to the taxpayers by buying down and eventually, ultimately, eliminating the school maintenance and operations portion of our property tax bill. That is about half of our property taxes. So back in February, this was the Freedom Caucus's position. And the position they took was that we need maximum property tax relief. Now, here's the interesting thing about that position. What is maximum property tax relief? We don't know. 
but we're finding out. We started to find out on Thursday when the Texas budget came before the body and it delivered about $12 billion of new property tax relief, okay? Which essentially says, and by the way, I just wanna also make sure it's clear, the property tax relief that we need to deliver to Texans, we need to deliver regardless of whether we took too much of their money. See, the position of Texas is not, hey, uh, people are taxed just about right, but we should return the money. It's that they are overtaxed. So we need to deliver relief. And that relief is needed whether we have taken too much in sales taxes and, and, and business uh, margins tax and inventory tax and all these other state taxes. Whether we've overtaxed the general population more than we need to, we still need to deliver property tax relief. Now, this legislative session, we have an easy way to do it. We took too much money from Texans. So we can return that money in the form of property tax relief. And guess what? It doesn't change anything else. We still have all the money we're going to get. But see, the legislature doesn't really want to do that. And it doesn't want to do it for a couple reasons. Now, one of them I'll explain, and this will kind of... Uh, explain that it, it's not quite as simple as just returning the money, okay? So if you take that $30 billion and you compress the tax rate, which means you basically write a check to public schools and it literally pushes down on the amount that they are allowed to take from you locally with your property taxes for schools. If they use it to compress, it basically creates somewhat of a new floor, it's pushing it down, or maybe a new ceiling, for lack of a better. So you're pushing it down and it's creating a new ceiling, a new cap on what the rate is. And when they do that in subsequent legislative sessions, they're going to have to keep funding it. And that's a good thing. See, what it does is it says the state is giving you this much money, we're buying down the rate, and then two years from now, we also have to prioritize that much money to buy down this rate. And that means that we will have tens of billions of dollars less to distribute to all of our pet projects. Well, the legislature doesn't want to do that, okay? They don't want to do that. So they have a plan. Their plan is to take 12 billion of the over 30 billion dollars and give it back to Texans in the form of new property tax relief compression. Now 12 billion is better than 1 billion, but is it maximum? Is it even close to maximum? It's not even the largest property tax cut in Texas history. And that's with a 30 billion dollar revenue surplus. Representative Tony Tinderhall was the only state representative who got up during the budget debate and said, I'm not voting for this budget because we have all this money and we're not giving Texans enough property tax relief. It was a very simple position. You see, if lawmakers in the Republican Party of Texas say, I want maximum property tax relief, but really they're going to sign off on whatever a couple Republican leaders say is the amount of property tax relief they're going to give. Then really they're just defining what maximum is whatever Greg Bonin, Morgan Meyer, and Dade Phelan decide they're going to give. And that is the game that gets played in Austin. You see, there's no willingness in Austin to let individual members advocate for individual policies. And what I mean by that is that with these big ticket policies, you have to export your own ideas and principles to the hierarchy of leadership. You have to literally give it away. So really when you're knocking on the doors of the people back at home, what they don't know is that what many of the lawmakers who are knocking on their door and talking to them really are going to practically do when they get to Austin is they're going to get to Austin and say, hey, I'm here to tell you that if I'm elected as your state representative, I'm going to ask three Republican members, Morgan Meyer, Greg Bonin, and Dade Phelan, 
to give you as much property tax relief as they're willing to give you. And then whatever they give you, I'm going to say is good and is the most we can give. That's how the game is played. And so, whereas in February, Representative Carrie Isaac's a good example, Carrie Isaac, before she was sworn into the legislature, said we need to return every penny of that back to the taxpayers. We took it from them, it's their money, we have to give it back. That's what she said. And then Dade Phelan came out, we actually talked about it on this show, he publicly chided her. He said, I got a bunch of members that haven't even been sworn in yet, and they're saying we need to give all this money back. Clearly, they haven't been catechized into the general understanding of how things work around here and how our budget process works. We have to get these people in line. And then lo and behold, now you're in February. And, and the, the language has changed. It's not we need to give it all back. Now it's we need to give maximum relief. Well, then you go, okay, well, that's better than subprime relief. That's better than minimum relief. That's better than less than half of the surplus relief. Maximum sounds like a lot, okay? But the number for property tax relief hasn't changed the entire session. So if the number that property tax of property tax relief that was going to be delivered prior to Carrie Isaac saying maximum was already maximum, then why didn't she just get up at a press conference and say, we are here to endorse House leadership's plan for property tax relief? Why say maximum? Maximum sounds like there needs to be more. But then when that plan comes up, it gets a rubber stamp. This is what is frustrating to any Texan who actually wants to see property tax elimination on the table. And when I say elimination, it doesn't mean elimination two years or four years from now, but it's saying, are we even putting ourselves on a road to elimination? House leadership is now pushing these appraisal caps, which literally in the bill says they will lead to increases in the rate, which eats away at property tax compression, which is the pathway to elimination. My argument, and this is of the Senate and the House right now, is that neither chamber in the legislature has a plan to put Texas on a pathway to property tax elimination. We've passed these revenue caps. We've passed a lot of reform. We have all this extra money. And not only all this extra money, we have a lot of economic growth. Take the surplus off. Guys, we're collecting more and more money. We're growing substantially. We're going to have more money in the next two years than we had in the previous two years. A lot more. Or a, a decent amount more, let's just say. We have an opportunity to put Texas on a pathway to elimination, but it's not happening. And honestly, there's hardly anyone in Austin even talking about the fact that it should happen. And, and while a lot of people can easily put these talking points on their push cards and they can send out mail and they can knock on your door and tell you, I want to get rid of property taxes. It's a lot harder when you get to Austin and everybody says, you can't say that. And not only can you not say that, you have to endorse and vote for our plan, which has no property tax elimination in the near future. In fact, we're not even moving in that direction. So what's going to happen? The budgets are going to get debated. The Senate and the House are going to argue for their various different property tax plans. And we're going to see what happens. But right now, there's hardly anyone standing up and saying, we have to compress as much as humanly possible. We took tens of billions of dollars more from taxpayers than we needed to take. And we need to give it back. It, that's not a good thing. That's a sad thing. And they're taking all this extra money and they're either putting it in their pockets in the form of like, just, we're just going to pocket this and wait for another time that we need this money for more government. Or they're doling it out to every single pet project that they can find. In Austin, I have talked to numerous lobbyists who literally have made comments like, man, it's a really good year to lobby the appropriators. It's a great year to have some clients that just need a little extra money. You see, that's the environment in Austin right now. The environment in Austin is that if your job is to get some entity more money, then you're doing fine right now. But if your job 
is to represent taxpayers and try to get them as much relief as possible, your job's really hard right now. And if you're a state representative who's trying to be for the taxpayer and not for the appropriators who are doling out a ton of money to a ton of people who want more of other people's money, you're also not welcome. That's the situation. So what's going to happen? I don't know, but I am going to keep you updated as to everything that happens. I hope that we can actually deliver maximum property tax relief. And let me tell you, maximum is more than they're currently delivering. And I hope more Republican lawmakers wake up to that fact. It's an interesting thing to realize that in 20, I guess it was 2013, we had dozens of Republicans vote against the budget. And they just said this budget is spending too much money and it's not a fiscally responsible budget. And this session, it seems like almost impossible for anyone to come up with a concept that growing government massively while also pocketing a lot of money that you took from taxpayers that you shouldn't have taken in the first place while not giving back even half of it to them in the form of new property tax relief is unacceptable. But the budget is still getting debated. There's a lot to be worked out, and we will come to you with those final numbers when they ultimately agree upon them and when both chambers ultimately vote on them. I hope you have a blessed weekend. May God bless you, and may God bless the great state of Texas. No ads, no paywalls, no government grants, and no corporate masters. Just real news for real Texans. This is Texas Scorecard. 